Hey everybody, welcome back to Jimmy's Promo. And today we're gonna to take a look at the top 10 features so far on Samsung One UI 6.0 with Android 14. Now we've already had two updates with this one. We had the initial launch and then one update after it. So we're basically on Samsung One UI 6.0 beta two. And I wanted to take pretty much all of the 30 brand new features or changes or updates. And I wanted to condense it to the top 10. And as always, I do have timestamps below the video inside the description. So this way you can go through the timestamps or the chapters to see exactly what we're talking about at any given point in the video. Now, the first feature that I want to talk about today is dealing with the lock screen and more specifically the clock. So when you take a look at this clock here, there was quite a few options that you're able to do of different clock styles. It just happened to be that wherever it was automatically by default showing, you weren't able to move it. So now with One UI 6.0, you are able to choose again, any clock that you would like to use, but you can change the size, uh, which you're able to choose the size from before, but now you can actually move it anywhere and everywhere you want. You're pretty much free to do it all the way around the top of it. And you can just choose again, any of these clock faces that, you know, makes the most sense to you. And then you can make them bigger, smaller, move them around. And then you also have your clock face app. So as long as you have clock face downloaded, you're going to have a bunch of other different options that you can choose from as well too. So let's say that you wanted to choose this one right here, you hit on select. And then at this point here, you can move it anywhere you want to. You know, sometimes when it comes down to the clock faces, you're not really able to change the size or the font, but you are able to change the size and the font and the color of anything that you see automatically just sitting here as default options. And then it depends on what type of background you're using, if it's going to be a lighter color, a darker color. So if there was actually a lot of whites that was in the background, these, this font would actually change into black, which is pretty cool. And then after you change your fonts, the way that you want them to look, and then you have all of your colors that you chose from the very bottom. I just have mine as automatic, just so it looks the best of whatever is on the background, because I do use the dynamic lock screen and with dynamic lock screen, uh, you can see it changes. You can also see right there, it went from the white font over to black. But yeah, now you're able to, to basically move wherever you want your little clock face to be for your lock screen. Now, feature number two, I know it's kind of small, but it does come a little beneficial, especially because it is something brand new and it's something that wasn't there beforehand. Now, for example, what I'm gonna show you is when you take a look at any application on your home screen, if you press and hold, you're gonna have little shortcuts that take you into something. So for YouTube, you have four different options. You can go inside of your shorts, you can do search, uh, subscriptions and explore. So it's a shortcut to take you directly into these tabs, you know, pretty much on the bottom. Now, if you go inside of your application tray, this up here is called Finder. So it's a way that you can find other applications. And for example, if I was to go through and type in YouTube, this right here would automatically just give you the options of like locate app, you know, add it to the home, you know, the information. That's what it did before Samsung One UI 6. So now when you actually do the find on the very top, because maybe you don't know exactly where you placed it, maybe it moved, maybe you have one that's hidden. So now you can actually go directly into a subscription or whatever of those applications. It's actually pretty cool. So again, when it comes down to, uh, let's say Instagram, you have camera, view activity, uh, new post and chats. Now feature number three, this is one that I've shown off several different times. Usually it's feature number one or feature number two in most videos. This one, I'm going to put it as number three, just to show you that you can do it with just one hand. You don't have to do two hands to do this. So you can see here, I have one hand. I'm just using two fingers. I have the finger and the thumb moving stuff around. So I know some people are mentioning, you know, what if you don't have a hand and you only have one and two hand is kind of one of the names that, you know, maybe they should change it. You can do it with two fingers. It doesn't matter. So two fingers, two hands. It's pretty cool because they were basically able to take away palm rejection. Palm rejection was where if you accidentally kind of had your palm sitting on the screen, and you're trying to do something, it was kind of rejecting it. They kind of made it to the ability now where you can, again, press and hold with a finger. And then as you are still holding onto a finger, you know, onto the screen right here, let's say you're pressing and holding, usually palm rejection would be working right now to where it wouldn't allow me to do this right here. So I'm using again, two fingers, two hands, whatever the case that I'm able to, you know, pretty much move all of these things around, making it much easier rather than just doing a press and hold and trying to move around and get through the whole device. This is much quicker and easier. You can do it, you know, from the gallery to text messages. You can do it from gallery into Samsung notes. You can do it from my, you know, my files to another, my my files folder. You can go from my files into Samsung notes and shoot. You can even do this inside of the calendar as well. You cannot be inside of the monthly view. You have to do it inside of the daily or the weekly. And so what you can do is just for the daily, for example, I can just press and hold and then I can actually just drag it right down here. It's actually pretty cool. And when they're talking about, you know, two fingers or two hands, you know, you can just swipe between the different days and then you can just drop it. 
and that's pretty much all you got to do. So it's a pretty fun way to move and, and operate your calendar as well, rather than just moving, you know, items and, and copy and pasting files from different applications. You can do it inside your calendar as well. Feature number four is a new look of the notifications. And I love this screen here because each notification actually has the specific actual app icon of the application. Beforehand, they were different icons. And now this just makes complete sense because now if something comes through with email, you know for a fact it's gonna look just like the one that's on your home screen that you open up, that you open up all the time. And then if there was a additional email, let's say that there was two new email notifications, they would actually both be stacked in this one little box here. So everything is completely separated by application with the actual app icon, which I think is actually very helpful when it comes down to taking a look at all of your notifications. Feature number five is one that helps out inside of the camera to make sure that you don't accidentally switch between the front facing and rear facing camera. Maybe a piece of hair dropped on the screen and you wanna wipe it off and then now you just switch cameras and now you have to go back, refocus. And so what you can do after this update now is when you go inside of the settings, you can scroll down and you see this option here, which is swipe up, down to switch cameras. So now when you deselect it, if you swipe up or down, it's not going to switch. The only way you can switch is by hitting this button right over here on the bottom right hand side. Some people may enjoy that, for me, I, I love the fact that I can be anywhere on the screen, swipe up or down. It makes it a little bit quicker and easier for me. Uh, my mind doesn't have to think about it. I don't have to think about where I have to tap an icon on a particular part of the screen. So yeah, it is now there though, if you accidentally switch between the front and the back, you know, every so often and you kind of get annoyed, you can now actually turn off that feature. Feature number six is one that's first found inside of your gallery. Now, what you want to do is once you open up your gallery, bottom right hand side, click on this little sandwich icon and you're going to see this option here that's called go to studio. Now, the first time you open this up, it'll ask you if you want to add this app to your application tray, and it'll also ask it right here. So if you already decline that option there, later in the future, it'll say add to apps. And when you add it to your apps, it's just going to sit inside of your application tray. You can see it right here called studio. And this is going to show the drafts or the ones that you have already worked on. And you can actually go back in. You can make some edits. You can uh, save the movie. You can also delete this. If you go inside of edit, you can go through here and then you can add in different lines of things. So you can add in some text, you can add in some stickers, you can add in some music. So if you go inside of my music and let's say that we just do this song right here, hit on done, you're going to see all the different lines. If I was even to put in text, you'll see another line and you can edit all of these individually. And then if you tap on any of these little videos, you can bring it in, you can splice it, you can change, you know, the, the end to be there, you can delete it. So yeah, there's a lot of really cool things you can do inside of here. On the top right hand side, you have the option to where you'd be able to choose the project settings. So how how do you want the aspect ratio to be? And then if you are done, you can actually just hit on the done button and you can either save the movie, you can delete it or leave it. So the next time you can come back in, you can edit it some more. Feature number seven is smart airplane mode. So right now you can see that I have my Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on. If I hit on airplane mode, both of them turn off. Now this is by default. This happens every single time. But take a look at this. If I let's we go back and we turn on Bluetooth, maybe this is something you do every single time you go on an airplane. What's going to happen now is the next time that you go into airplane mode, Bluetooth will actually stay on. So take a look at this. Let's say that we go out of the airplane mode. You can see that it is still on because it would basically turn back on anyway since I turned off airplane mode. So here we are. We're back in with Wi-Fi. We have Bluetooth. Now this time when I hit on airplane mode, it remembered it and it's going to keep the option of Bluetooth sitting right there. You can see right here, your device remembers to keep Bluetooth on. And let's say that I turn this one on now. Now what's gonna happen is when I turn off the Bluetooth or when I turn off the airplane mode, everything will stay the same as from before because this is what would normally happen because your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth will turn on when your airplane mode is turned off. So now when I turn on the airplane mode, both will stay on. So this is if this is something that you do every single time you pop on an airplane, it will actually remember it for you. And if you ever want to go back to default, all you have to do is put it right back to the off position when you're inside of airplane mode. And now when you turn it off, it will have these two turned off when you go back inside of airplane mode. It's just kind of a way to put it back inside of default. Feature number eight, we're going to go back inside of the camera. And one of the things I like is just the, the brand new look or the overhaul of how it looks when you take a look at your resolutions. Uh, but mostly when it comes down inside of the video, because sometimes you have a couple different areas to choose between how you want it to go in terms of the size and the frames per second. And then also sometimes too, you can see immediately which frames per second you can use 
with each and every different size option. So if you want to go with Ultra HD, 60 frames per second, go for it. It's going to keep it. But I think that the way that they set this up here is just much more universal. It looks just like a DSLR camera. So yeah, I'm a big fan of the overhaul of how it looks inside of video when you go inside of all of your different size and frames per second in terms of anything dealing with resolution. Feature number nine is one that's built inside of the gallery. So let's go back inside. And with this one, when you swipe up, this is gonna be your information. And now what you can do is you can actually have three different options of a quick edit. So you can actually do a background effect. So if you wanna change the background effect, if you want it to have a higher strength, you can do that right from the info page. So now we're gonna go right back in this image here, swipe up one more time, and then we can do object eraser. We can get rid of this worker in the back. That's fine if there's someone else in the background. Uh, so we're just gonna erase that one and then hit on save. And then now this is our brand new image. And then let's say we take a look at this one right here. If you swipe up, you're gonna see that there's gonna be different options as well too sometimes. So you have portrait effect. So this one wasn't already in portrait effect and I can try to get it there, there uh, as well. There's remaster and then also again, object eraser. In feature number 10, this is one that we talk about a lot and a lot of people also want a small change with this one and that's gonna be the expanded music player. So expanded music player, this is the condensed version. I kind of wish that it would be this option right here, right off the get go, because if this is the new version of what this you know little music widget looks like, I'd rather have it be expanded already in the screen but when you go inside of your lock screen, it looks pretty good. One thing that they did with beta two was they brought it back down to collapsed. They need to have it as extended the whole entire time. But the only way that you can kind of see this extended on the lock screen immediately is by double tapping the time. So you can see all of your different widgets here being a little bit larger. So yeah, it's kind of cool. So let's say that you, again, you take a look at your lock screen, you kind of turn this one on a little bit, you double tap the time, there's your expanded music player. Again, I want this to be everywhere automatically by default, but it's a pretty cool look. This is new with Samsung One UI 6.0 with Android 14. So this right here has been the top 10 list of everything that's brand new so far. I already made the first video that had about 20 different changes. I had the second video of beta two that had about like 12 or 13 different changes. And I tried to find the best top 10. So hopefully you guys appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.